You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Ad Astra. So, y'all, I gotta go back to work soon, so let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. My last full day in Ad Astra comes just as soon as I thought it would. Too soon. As I sit on the stone bench, breathing in the cool early morning air, I find myself trying to think back on the last few months, even the last few weeks. It's all a bit blurry. The days continue in the same way. Me, with too much time on my hands, while Amamicus was kept busy by a rapidly changing empire. Ooh, excuse me, empire. With his assigned role already in progress, I've mostly been left to wait. And while the wait seemed torturously long, it simultaneously seemed unrealistically quick. Feels like only last week that I was touring the moon with Amicus, visiting the major cities on our way to pick up Cassius. It had been one of the better experiences I had on Ad Astra, really getting to see how different each part of the moon could be for the first time, despite the basically universal culture. I got to see the breathtaking mountain ranges that surrounded the city of Lux. I rode giant, questioning, questionably safe amusement rides and ate all kinds of good food in the city of Adrote, basically a giant Las Vegas. And all the while, I got to stay in the luxurious villas owned by the Imperial family, spending much of my time walking, fishing, and even hunting with Amicus. And then we picked up Cassius and Alex, and the trip ended. That was over three months ago. Ever since then, the only thing I've really focused on is my studies. I've learned enough with the, of the language that I can hold that I can hold stilted conversations with Amicus. He always enthusiastically tells me that I'm doing an amazing job, even though I know I probably sound like a very young child to him. One with a heavy, with a heavy, clumsy accent. I don't think I've done enough. None of this is going to help me with my mission on Earth. Not since the experience I had with Amicus in the Archives have I heard it from the Monitor, let alone the parents. I said they seem to be content to just let me drift around aimlessly like I always have. It's gotten to the point that I even asked Amicus if what happened in the Archives actually happened and I wasn't all just a dream. And speaking of dreams, I haven't even been able to give- I haven't even been given one of those. Not even an all as well from the Space Dragon. What's most infuriating is that Amicus is in contact with them. Of course, he asks on my behalf if they have anything to say to me, but nothing. I can only assume it's because they don't want to interfere with the process, even though they're going to have to tell me something. At least, at least direct me where to go first. Otherwise, they're probably just going to hospitalize me when I show up talking about space wolves and the impending assimilation with the Galaxias. I feel my insides twist uncomfortably like they have been for the past several months, and especially in the past week. I'd have to leave. I had to leave Amicus's room because I didn't want to keep waking him up with my tossing and turning. That and lying there awake watching Amicus immediately sleep innocently next to me is just a bit too much for me right now. I know I should be savoring these last moments, but instead I find myself twisted up in worry. I'm going to be alone. It's something that hasn't really scared me much before I came here, but after being with Amicus for so long and now with this path ahead of me, I go from hugging myself to twirling the now fitted ring on my finger. It's been a security blanket of sorts. We had debated on we had debated on whether or not to marry before I leave, but Eventually decided Amicus should lay some legal groundwork first so as not to cause much cause too much of an uproar. It has eight years to do it at he has eight years to do it after all. It will give me something to look forward to when I return. Our entire lives adjusted to fit the schedule laid out by the parents. This is all assuming they're telling the truth, and not for the first time, I wonder if I can really count on them to make sure I return to Ad Astra. They're controlling everything, and I don't think they would be sending me on a mission and that would somehow result in me never coming back here. That's the whole point. And I'm uniting two different worlds. I sigh, closing my eyes at the ridiculous way of this statement. Why the hell did they choose me? I'm a fucking idiot. I open my eyes again as I hear shuffling steps up the path. For a moment I think I'm going it's going to be Amicus, maybe having woken up and found me missing from the bed. It's what I hope to see, even though I know he needs his he needs his sleep. I'm under enough stress right now that I'm willing to be selfish. But no. I'm a bit surprised to see Virginia walking along the main path. Head down as she manipulates one of those transparent tablets that the officials around here have. As she gets closer, I let out a soft cough so I don't surprise her. She looks up, her pace slowing before she realizes that it's me. I had assumed she would be just continue on her way, but now she deliberately walks in my direction. Pleasant, mor pleasant early morning to you, Killian. Good morning. I must say that I'm a bit surprised to see you outside before Vita has even risen. I shrug. Looks like an L. Water time. Had trouble sleeping. There's a pause, and Virginia gives me a look, one that I think is sympathetic. I imagine. More silence. Even now, at the very end of my journey on Ad Astra, I feel the stiff, awkward wall between us. Out of everyone I've met in the palace, I feel I know. I feel I know. I feel I know the. I feel I know Virginia the least, and that includes Alex. 
While her intentions became clear to me, like everyone's eventually did, I literally know nothing else about her. I try to fill the silence. So what is you up so early? Virginia raises an eyebrow. We have run out of time to negotiate funding for a few smaller provinces to the north. I'm using the early hours to make time. That doesn't sound fun. It is not meant to be fun. My life is now dedicated to serving the Empire. My own concerns do not matter. I sigh. Listen, I'm going to be honest here. You seem less happy than you were before you had this position. Again, my concerns are not important. I'm not saying they are. I'm just wondering why you wanted this position if it's only making your life worse. Virginia gives me a long, hard look. It, it always seems like our conversations become tense if we talk if we talk for more than three sentences. I think you are not understanding the concept. My concerns do not matter. I do not matter. What does matter is the work I do. So you just wanted to run the Empire in a more efficient way or something? Yes, or something. You could just be blunt like the Kimians are and tell me. If we get to the point, you wouldn't have to be so angry all the time. The look on Virginia's face has me raising my hands defensively. All right, sorry. I know whenever I talk, I just piss you off, so I'll just stop. What has you so brash this morning? Everything. I put up my hands to either side of myself as if to indicate the whole situation I'm in. But at least it's not, but at least I'm not always. I don't know, acting like you're just an annoying distraction. Hell, even Cassius acknowledges my presence more than you do. I mean, it's a bit late now, but considering I'm in a relationship with your brother, maybe we should get to know each other when I come back. Virginia, Virginia regards me for a moment, then takes a deep breath. Killian, I know you were leaving tomorrow, as we all do, but I also know that you will be back, and I will be made to work with you for a very long time, likely for the rest of our lives. I frown. How would Virginia know I'll be working with the Empire? Is she supposed to know that? I start to wonder if the parents are talking, not to, just not to me. Virginia answers that question next, though. Amicus told me, as he should have, considering my position. It will help us prepare, at least in secret. I wonder if the parents told him that was okay. I don't want to deviate from their plan at all if it risks my mission. Virginia interrupts my thoughts, though. But I will say this once, and never again, so remember it when you return. I wait expectantly. While young, my brothers and I experienced very different sides of my father. He coddled Amicus, neglected Cassius, and for me, it was a sort of in-between. He paid me very close, but strict attention. Unlike my brothers, who received lessons in math, science, and combat, I was given lessons in speech, etiquette, but mainly I was subjected to long, cruel sessions of behavioral molding. He altered who I was as a person, something he would never do to his sons. Oh, why? All I understood at the time was that he planned for me to occupy a prestigious position in the Empire. Still, I hated him for it. I felt almost no emotion when he sat when his sabotaged ship crashed. Oh. Yes, how odd he would... How odd he would... Odd how he would project himself to be the most egalitarian em emperor in our history, yet treat his own daughter like clay that he could shape in any way he wanted. I'm really at a loss for words. But following his death and the resulting power struggle, I came to learn why, and the reason was rather simple. If I were to be the first female in a particular position of power, I needed to, be, I needed to set an example. Not only that, but I would need to ward off attempts by those in power to undermine me. My mind was already trained for the deceit that I, that I would that I would come up against, and it serves me well even now as officials spread rumors and attempt to discredit me. One second, y'all. It is water time. Amateurish rumors, I'll have you know. Seems they can't think of anything more complex than saying the reason I get so much done is because I'm a whore. But Father personally made sure I understand the most important lessons in this empire. Trust no male. It's what will keep me alive in this role. While I still hate Father, I understand him now, which is better than just hate. Through all this, I can only sit there awkwardly on the bench. Okay, so is that why you treat me the way you do? I'm a male and you can't trust me? Killian, I trust no one. I simply don't have to worry about women because they hold no power. Yet. I'll tell you this so that you might understand me, as you wished. We will need to be close allies in the future, after all. While I'm sure my upbringing has a little bit to do with my demeanor, the main reason for my shortness with you is simply due to your immaturity and lack of self-control. Amicus is no different. I grimace. I think I'm a bit better than Amicus. Hmm, yes, though he is growing into his position well enough. I'm sure you will as I'm sure you all will as well. I'm not sure if that's encouragement or an insult. And thank you for saving my brother. I don't believe I've had the chance to say that yet. I know what I just said, but he is one of the few I, I can trust to be himself. And Virginia turns away, walking toward the Imperial ship. I really must be off to the city now. I'll be present for your departure tomorrow morning. Goodbye. Bye. I watched Virginia walk off into the dark, still feeling like I don't really know anything about her, even if she did kind of open up to me for the first time. At least she's willing to work with me on how to integrate humanity. I'd been worried about that.
The edge of the sky is just turning a lighter blue as I make my way back into the palace. This is usually about the time that Amicus wakes up, so I'm not surprised to hear the shower running when I walk into his room. I think about going into the bathroom, then think better of it, not wanting to hold up Amicus's morning routine. I have to admit that I'm a little disappointed that he didn't come looking for me first thing. Usually that's something he'd do if he's not sure where I am. For now, I just sit on the bed and wait, gradually growing more tired as the minutes go by, finally feeling like I might be able to get some sleep. The door slides open and Amicus steps out, freshly showered and dressed. He smiles brightly when he sees me. There you are. I was wondering if maybe you'd gone to get breakfast early. Immediately, I'm jarred by Amicus's overly cheerful demeanor, his voice louder than usual. No, I, I just needed some air. Air? Is it too stuffy in here? No, it's freezing, as usual. I stand up and hug Amicus, which he enthusiastically accepts. I sink into his furry warmth, and I feel my eyes sting as the, sting as the reality of how much time we have left really sinks in. Amicus. My voice is small and sad. And Amicus quickly but gently sets his paws on my shoulders to push me back push me back a step so that he can look into my look me in the eyes. Hey, I'm gonna be back early tonight. As early as possible. Unfortunately there are a few mandatory meetings involving the Kimians that I must attend. I know. Amicus had already tried to take the day off, but of course things came up. And don't worry, I've kept tonight simple. Just dinner between you and I. I can tell that Amicus is putting on a brave face. So I do the same and swallow back the awful feelings that have been threatening to overwhelm me. Alright, I'll be waiting. Good, it won't be long, and the sooner I leave, the sooner I will return. Then you better get going. Right away, Emperor Consort. I grimace at the title I would hold if Amicus made our marriage official, but he plants a kiss on my face anyway before pulling back and smiling at me. I love you, and tonight we shall be happy. I try to smile back as Amicus takes his leave, disappearing out the door, wondering how I'm going to manage to do that. Hopefully well enough for Amicus' sake. I'm able to nap for a few hours, after which I walk through the halls, though at a much slower pace than usual. I take a good look at everything, rem everything, remembering. I walk past the meditation room, and I pause before opening the door. I'd made up with Amicus here after our fight a year ago. This is all where I accidentally got high on the, on the Somni Cassius had been smoking. The main reason I opened the door, though, is because I'm curious if any of that plan is lying around. Maybe try to contact the Monitor myself. I don't see any, and remembering Cassius' horrible experience gets me to give up pretty fast not wanting to be tormented by the by the monitor because I didn't follow their plan correctly. Second y'all, it is water time. Mm. Oh, delicious, delicious sparkling water. All right. <clears throat> I head out into the gardens like usual, taking in the beauty of the arranged foliage for the last time. I remember my first morning here with Alex. He'd been so helpful and kind, and I feel some sadness at the idea that I'll probably never see him again. It stalled a bit as I remember that he'd, also, that he'd only been sizing me up for manipulation, even then. Well, I feel our friendship has been partially genuine. I know that what he's done is something I can never forgive, even though Cassius was able to. I head back in for a light breakfast, sitting on Amicus's usual bed. I watch the screens as I do, not surprised to see Amicus's face pop up a few times. He is the Emperor, after all, but I'm surprised to see my own face, and I know immediately they're talking about us, speculating. I tell Calm to turn it off and sit there for a bit thinking back on what had happened in his room. As always, my eyes are drawn to the dark wine stain on Cassius' bed, something that remained even after a deep cleaning. It hasn't, it hasn't been replaced, likely because Cassius doesn't really live in the palace anymore. Of course, it always brings to mind the moment he drank the poisoned wine. The day we'd all sat there, knowing something was wrong, yet Cassius still trusting Cato enough to never suspect an assassination attempt, something, we would, something he would have suspected if Nefru and I had been less cautious about releasing information on the sabotage ship. It probably wasn't enough to convict him in a trial, but I would have known. Even now, I'm not sure why I'd handed him the wine, knowing it would end badly, knowing I should spill it just like I did my first time serving it. Yet I did what I was told, almost like a robot, maybe because I'd been conditioned to do whatever the wolves told me. I don't blame Cassius for staying away from the palace after what he went through. An assassination attempt resulting in a medically induced coma does things, does things to the mind, according to him. I wonder if that includes forgiving a spy that's partially responsible for dozens of deaths. Feeling slightly nauseous, I spend the rest of my f I send the rest of my food back. I decide not to think about Alex anymore, feeling like the cat had never gotten what he deserved. I need to distract myself until Amicus gets back, so I head for the baths. It's become part of my routine, and the part I always look forward to the most for a couple of reasons. First, it's just nice to soak, and second, because I see the person I often run into here. Oh god, I'm gonna have to definitely edit that out. He soaks in the pool, head leaning back against the edge, eyes closed. While I may have lost my friendship with Alex, I had gained a great one with Neferu. 
Good thing, too, considering he's the only other sapient that's regularly in the palace during the day. I walk over to the benches, beginning to strip off my robe, glancing at the jackal. You know, it's not safe to fall asleep in the bath. Nefru shifts, raising an eyebrow even though he keeps his eyes closed. I appreciate your concern, but I feel that the sensation of water filling my lungs would be sufficient to wake me up. And I was not asleep. I was awaiting your arrival. I walk up to the edge of the pool, Nefru turning his head to look back at me, not even glancing at my naked groin. Really? I didn't think he'd be here. Amicus told me he had Kimmy and meetings to go to. Briefly, I felt a little upset at the idea that Nefru might stay at the palace to see me while Amicus wouldn't. But only briefly. Things are different for the Emperor. Luckily for me, my presence is no longer requested at such meetings. It matters little. I have direct access to the Emperor anyway. I sigh. You should choose your words carefully in front of the Emperor's fiance. Why must you think I always speak in innuendos? Because you do? I jump into the pool. It's not something I usually do, and I'm reminded why as my entire body burns for a few for a few moments. It's worth it, though, as I come up and see what that see that I've accomplished my goal of splashing Nefru, the jackal in the middle pawing, pawing water from his eyes. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye